Hi everyone. Hi guys. It's lovely to see you again. Um, we're, we're still not together in our loft, but we're, we're going to keep giving you content. Um, Trying our and hardest. Today, I, this is absolutely, we really, we really want to kind of keep connecting with you all. Um, and today is a fragrance house, again, that Dan introduced me to, um, but a, a sort of all natural perfume house that's yeah. probably not on everyone's radar, I would think, Dan. Am I right? Well, not a huge amount. I mean, it, it, I have to say, it is one that's been recommended to us quite a lot you know often when we do videos we ask for more recommendations and people who have said if you like Arish Adore, if you like Bortnikov, if you like Ensari, if you like Solvin Pasha you really should check out uh, TRNP and it's one of these ones I've been kind of getting round to and then I've seen lots especially on Instagram lots of people posting about them talking about them um, and so I took uh, the plunge and I ordered a bunch of samples um, a huge bunch I really like them samples. And so then, and then a few weeks later, I actually bought some more things <laughs> uh, from them because I was so like wowed and excited. Um, so we're just going to give you a bit. This is not really a review. This is kind of just a chat <laughs> uh, yeah, about like an overview, about, isn't it? Really? Yeah, kind of. And we, we're going to we were going to try and select just a couple of fragrances, but at the end we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we've got about eleven fragrances we're going to talk about. <laughs> so Sounds like gonna, one of our top tens. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Uh, so, Tion uh, Reintel, um Natural Perfume is what TRNP stands for. Um, and I think we can just say at the outset, if you love vintage style fragrances, um, or if you love oud, or if you love um, really lush florals, then there's a lot to love in this house Absolutely. because you know they've got they're, they're, it's really kind of exciting stuff so she uh dr orientel i think she studied um in aromatherapy um about 20 years ago and then she just started experimenting with with tinctures and and natural essential oils um to combine them to make fragrances for herself um and she really started doing this there's I, i'm getting a lot of this information some from her website but there's also there's a really good uh, video which nickel from exotic sense and um, he did an interview with her so i'll put a link below but um just before you get a, a chance to watch that yeah she just experimented in to see what she could do herself and what she could create herself um and all her fragrances are completely 100 percent all natural but she i get the impression she didn't Rarity. set out it, yeah, it is. It is quite rare, and um, I have to say, I personally, I'm not someone anymore. I, I was for a while thinking, oh, I have to have kind of all natural things, and now I think that there is a, a place for synthetics, and I'm not someone that um, looks down on synthetics at all. I think they can be used kind of really well. Um, Absolutely. And listening to her uh, speak on this uh, this interview, she's not someone that that was. Uh, you know going against synthetic perfumery at all it's just that natural perfumery and uh, tinctures that she'd made and tinctures that she'd sourced were things that she understood so she was just experimenting them just for herself not for kind of a, a financial yeah. enterprise to see what she could do and then i guess as lots of people do she tried to recreate yeah your chanel number no. five your um your, your Guerlain's and your cotti those kind of classic things um, which we all would do wouldn't we if we were I mean, if, if we you've got, fumers, I would make that in a heartbeat. I would make an old, an old girl. And, and I think you've got dream. to. I mean, like I know we do quite a lot of musical analogies, but it's the same way that if you're studying music, you've studied the harmony of Bach, and then you, you know, you, or if, if you're a singer, you would sing Handel and Mozart, and then some Italian things like that to kind of really yeah. kind of ground you, and then you can go and kind of explore and experiment and stuff. But you need that kind of classical bounding, uh, grounding. So it, it seems to be a logical place to start. Um, and there are quite a lot of real vintage inspired fragrances in this selection, which yeah. is one of the things which attracted us. The other thing which attracted me about this house is whenever I asked for, for recommendations, I said, oh, I'm gonna get some samples. And I asked a few people on Instagram and things like that. And everybody had a different favorite. Not, not only a different favorite, yeah. but everyone had a selection of four or five favorites. Um, Good sign. Which, Exactly. It, it, you know, it, it kind of suggests you kind of got quality across the board and also you've got personality. So some really resonate with somebody else. Well, you know, others and others. I think you'll see that when we, when we talk about yeah. this. 
Um, I've had a real nostalgia trip, actually, just wearing these. And I can never quite put my finger on why or how, but they all, or every single one of them, actually, even the less vintagey things, put me in a certain mood straight away. Absolutely. Without me analysing what was in them or feeling this is a vetiver or this is a, a no gloss. I just felt a sense of um, connection to something. I don't know. It's very I, I rare had, that I get that in a pair. I had kind of two kind of main experiences and a bit in between but my two experiences were like yes this is something nostalgic and this really reminds me of this and takes me somewhere that i feel familiar and cozy with and there was also the slight other feeling of wow like what what, what is this this yeah. is really unusual and i don't quite understand this and it's, it's very different um and the interesting thing about this house and i didn't get this straight away because i was looking up about her fragrances and there seemed to be these vintage inspired sheepers um, and even some which are directly inspired by specific fragrances. And there were also a lot of oud fragrances. And they were almost two ballparks, which I didn't necessarily place together initially, you know, kind of classic French mm. um, perfumery with oud, which is now very popular. But, but then it kind of dawned on me that, I mean, she doesn't use any animalic um, or any animal derived animalics at all. So no civet, no castorium, no musk, nothing like that. Not even any ambergris. Um, but oud is a material which does have animalic facets. And also these kind of uh, complicated, kind of slightly um, almost unpredictable facets, which is what yeah. attractive about musk or, or civet or something like that. So she's not using any synthetic musks or or, or synthetic silver or anything like that, nor is she using any naturals. So she's getting all of her funk and warmth and cuddly, cosy muskiness from oud, which is quite interesting, I think. And, and, yeah. and the, more I th the, the more I think about it, the more obvious it is. Um, yeah, well, I, I noticed a few times I, I was smelling some animalic things, but I couldn't really put them down to anything like civet or ambergris. And I think it was just the way she was using oud, the type of oud, um, I was occasionally, and we'll probably, we'll probably notice, I was occasionally getting some like styraxy, rubbery animalics as well that I've noticed in a few perfumes. Yeah. Um, very clever. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some styrax, which is a kind of, kind of a resiny thing, but it, it smells. I remember when we were with Sarah and McCartney, we smelled styrax and we thought, oh, that's civet. And it's, it's got a kind of a yeah, civety kind, yeah. of, kind of quality. Um, she's also talked to, um, on Instagram about her source of, of oud. So she uses a, 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 a company, she's from Brisbane, Australia, and this is, there's another supplier of oud, which is based in, in Brisbane, and a lot of her oud is a uh, plantation, so it's organic oud rather than wild oud in Vietnam. Um, but then she also uses, I think slightly more recently, Hindi oud, uh, which yeah. is slightly more funky. So that's the punchy, chat. Oh. A little, just we'll get a last bit of business out of the way, and then and then we'll or then we'll move on to actually smelling some stuff. So prices, because it's worth knowing, they are they vary a bit. They vary quite a lot, in fact. So it varies. She does some thirty mil bottles, which look like this, um, thirty mil atomizers, and then she does these absolutely spectacular fifty mil gra fifty mil glass bottle dabbers and i'll put a picture up because they're absolutely ah, wow. cool. they're, they're really 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 beautiful um and so these 30 mil range from 104 us dollars to I, I think 208 us dollars so that varies uh, based on material so obviously if there's lots of oud in it it's going to be the more expensive if not you might get it cheaper and the dabber ones range from 156 dollars for 50 mil and these great beautiful glass bottles to 347 um she also does some of, of these 10 mil pencil samples i mean they're not pencil samples i mean you know it's a good size bottle a 10 mil glass bottle um, yeah that'd last you wouldn't it and this one for instance this is the one i bought a bulgakov which is an oud one that was 60 us dollars right okay i really it's have... good to have a, a broad range like that i think it's important to go by your ingredients there mm. are lots of houses that just they charge the same across the board for for everything and it's it sort of puts me off a little bit that they don't even know what they're selling or the value of it absolutely and you think you know aventus the, the price seems to keep going up and up and up and up and you think well have they got some specific material which is getting more expensive possibly but yeah. i really feel there seems to be an obvious if you look at the website and the materials 
you can see kind of an, an obvious relation. Um, just one more thing before we get into the smelling, that she does, she does things in small batches and some of the fragrances we're talking about and lots of the fragrances on the website um, have changed. She's done previous incarnations of them. So I would suggest that you don't go and look at Fragrantica because that, that's often what I do to, as a reference point. I kind of look at Fragrantica, but lots of them have changed formulation. Um, and for instance, there's some which are now quite oody, which didn't have oody before. So they've changed a bit. So just go by what it says on the website get some samples yeah. because she, she's really quite generous. They're quite big size samples. Um, and she'll probably kind of, well, if you're lucky, she might throw in a couple of, of, of extra samples with them as well. Um, so try and go by your nose on what you read and what you think you like, rather than just looking on uh, Fragrantica. Right. Yeah, always the way. That's definitely the end of the chat. Let's start smelling. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly, so what have we got first? So I, 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 I bought some samples, and then if you've seen our previous, our previous videos, so that we can both, um, you know, it, it share the experience. I decanted my little sample, so here's a sample, and I've decanted some of it, so that Joe has got it as well, there so we that go. we can Thank both you be very smelling much, it. Mate. But it's, it's, it's so not, important, isn't it, that we both have the reference point as well? If we couldn't do it like that, I wouldn't be doing it. You know, it's a part. You know, it's oh, a part like yeah. sharing the journey, sharing the conversation, sharing the experience, and you know, often Joe Absolutely. will pick up something which I never thought. And it, it wouldn't be fun if we wouldn't do it like this. Smells like biscuits. <laughs> more kaya. So, more kaya. Yeah, weirdly, we both started on the same one by pure chance. Yeah. <laughs> now, more kaya, I think, is an ancient kind of 2000 BC-ish. Um, God, I haven't sprayed it. And even the smell of the cap is amazing. It's an ancient uh, civilization really in uh, South America, kind of Mexico, Guatemala. And they were they the first people to kind of harvest, use cacao, chocolate. So, mm. which already is bringing me to mind um, a nice bowl of mole. This, I mean, so good. <laughs> this, this is so. I said I had the kind of the, the, the kind of three category, three categories. First one was like, oh, I, I recognise where that's coming from. The other one was, wow, what is this? This is a wow, what is this? Yeah, it's just such a big, extraordinary <laughs> kind of opening of kind of. Initially, I don't get chocolate straight away. I get tobacco and patchouli and orange. Yeah, and the like the patchouli. I, I get I get a big dose of orange straight away. Lot of orange. Very oily orange. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've I've worn this on skin. I should point out, I'm smelling it from the cap now, but. I have worn this in the last few days. and This is actually the I've first time I've sprayed them on card. All of these, I've had them for a few weeks, you know, kind of, some of them for a month now. I've been wearing them on my skin. And this is just the most amazing. I mean, she, um, I think she likes patchouli because patchouli crops up quite a lot. And the patchouli in this mm. is so big and leafy and also kind of dry. And, and I felt like the way the kind of dryness of the patchouli really segues to a kind of dry, dusky cacao, you know, like a... Um, yeah. I mean, not hot chocolate powder, something a bit more highbrow, but that, but you know, that kind of real, like, not like nowhere near milk chocolate, like absolutely miles away from that. No, it doesn't have any of the sweetness of, of like cocoa powder. Well, of, of kind of milk chocolate cocoa powder. Yeah. It's but a proper it's, green and black's organic cocoa. It's, it's, um, it's so thick and, um, the, Weirdly, it doesn't smell like it, but the fragrance I was reminded of a tiny bit was Slow Dive um, by uh, Hiram, Hiram Green, which is another all-natural house, actually. Yeah. Not that it smells like it, but just in this feeling of this thick, luxurious, engulfingness of it. Yeah. You know it's what the I mean? treatment of it, isn't it, that does it? Well, I get I mean, a little bit of, it's not the same, but I get a little bit of rem a reminder of Cerezo as well by Profumum Roma. Just for the richness it, of that of that chocolatiness. Not I the same smell, say, but of course. I'm also re reminded a bit of patchouli by Profumum Roma as well. Yeah. Because it's Very got leafy this kind of and damp. You've got this like, just great interplay. It's so weird, isn't it, that you start with... I feel you kind of start with tobacco and patchouli, which are kind of, they normally can be kind of quite base notey. But I really feel you've got this interplay of these big, thick, heavy green leafiness. Um, yeah. 
and yes, there is some orange to start with, but it's, it's, it's kind of secondary, I think, to this kind of leafiness. And then it's just... Have you ever, have you, sorry to interrupt, have you ever had cherry drops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a little bit of that in the opening as well. Yeah. That, just that beautiful, like, cherry tobacco. Oh, it's so, I mean, actually... It, it's could be the, it could be the orange as well, I think. It's, it's, it's interesting trying it on card for the first time. And it's not quite as luminous on card as it is on skin. I feel it engulfs you much more. I mean, it's yeah. still it's still beautiful, and it's a good kind of like reminder. But oh. it's and, really and more, great stuff. And the chocolate starts to kind of uh, become more prominent. And just as you feel um, that the chocolate is maybe going towards the bitter side a bit more, I found you got this kind of jasmine, which gave you the sweetness. So. It's just a little bit of floral kind of round sweetness as opposed to, yeah. I don't know, as opposed to, I'm really glad there's not vanilla in this. Yeah. Because I it think doesn't need it, all, it. It would be a step too far. It would be. And I think with the heaviness of the tobacco and the patchouli and the chocolate, I think, I think vanilla could have steered it in quite an gourmand, kind of gooey, sticky way. Yeah. The jasmine just adds a bit of chewy sweetness and is there so iris in there as well? I get a, like a little when I wore a little sort of chalky, chalky iris or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, very possible. Maybe just my nose. There's definitely a floral chewiness to it. Yeah. Like, no question. No question. I don't know if that's just jasmine or I don't know if there's some orisy, irisy things as well. But it just this is a big fragrance as well. It kind of yeah. you sometimes wonder with natural perfume that it's not going to perform well, but this definitely did. And also, I just like uh, yeah, the fact last when I, on me. you'll see the rest of the, the ones I talk about, and maybe if you know our channel, they're a bit more obviously kind of my taste. There's some Udi ones and there's some kind of sheep prison things. Whereas this is one I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to order this. Um, and I'm so glad I didn't because, wow, awesome. She right. has a real gift. Let's, so another one, which I didn't order, uh, but she threw in, was called Megas. Um, actually Magus. threw in because this is one of her new series, which is a Corn de Fée series, which I think just means fairy tales. Magus. I think, is Magus the same as Magi? Is Magi the plural of Magus? Possibly, yeah. So it's like like a kind of Persian, like spiritual kind of leader. Yeah. Anyway, let's on their way spray to, it. On their way to see the little newborn. A spray. I think you should it's, spray this I mean. I've got, I've got a bit of spare skin here on the inside. There we go. This is. Oh. Hold on. And also, interesting major connection because frankincense and myrrh, definitely like big dose of that. This for me, is and very just, r beautiful rosy as well. For me, this is just. Oh. This was. Uh, since buying the first lot, I have actually bought two bottles, and the, I didn't buy a bottle of this. One of the best. This is one of the best. This is absolutely amazing. I would say, yeah. and the thing, I, I don't know if you smelled it, Joe, but the, the fragrance which leapt to mind, it doesn't smell exactly like it, but really sprang to mind, was Oud Picante by Arige de Dore. Certainly in terms of quality, and that just slightly spicy, clovey, clovey yeah. oud. <sighs> it's just... It's, yeah, I got wow. sort of clove, cardamom, rose bomb. It's amazing, isn't it? It's so. Yeah. It's this is a wow, wow, wow fragrance. <laughs> I mean, definitely, really, uh, definitely the Middle Eastern variety. You don't smoke. I mean, and also that that oud in there. I think this is a Hindi oud one because that oud is it's quite funky, isn't it? Like yeah. there's quite a, a kind of twang to it. Yeah. Um, quite medicinal. Yeah. Well, I but I don't. I think I don't know if is the medicinal. That might be the clove this, though. I think because it's clove and there's also kind of frankincense and probably some myrrh as well but i wonder if it's if it's you kind of get this bitter dry almost acrid medicinal um yeah. quality of of kind of clove and this kind of quite dry frankincense and then maybe with the kind of the the, the, the funk of the oud it's seriously punchy <sighs> it's wow I, I also the other thing i get massively is cola like coca-cola ah okay. I get. Do you, I, I really thought this when I first smelled it. Like, I know what you mean. 
or even a kind of like slight, it doesn't smell cherry, but like a cherry cut or a Dr. Pepper, you know, that I really got that association. You know what, what it has a slight reference to for me, but just purely because I have it and I've worn it recently, um, is Youth Dew. Oh, wow. Just okay. a little bit of a connection to that, that, that sort of, I, I always associate that with a sort of cherry cola vibe and I didn't get it with this, but I do get that, the connection to Youth Dew. So maybe there, there is something in there. It's There's well, something I, that's sort of fizzing in the opening. It's but but fizzing, I think, is the word. Like yeah. it is fizzy, and it's like ah, oh, it's so it's it's just amazing. There's a little jasmine going on there again. A hundred percent, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and I think that like the jasmine really. I, I'm just kind of looking at my notes because I normally make some kind of notes on them, but I've made pages and pages of notes on on these samples. Um, and I feel the jasmine just about balances out that bitterness of kind of, of frankincense and clove. Yeah. And there must be, I think there's some rose in there. I think that's a really good um, Thai rose again. I get, a, I get a very lemony fresh rose. But that oud, I mean the oud Slightly is, funky as well. The oud is funky and, and you know, if you're you know, not familiar with kind of Hindi oud. I think it could come as a little bit of a, initially a bit of a shock, but it's just, it's so well balanced. For me, it's so well yeah. balanced. Like you've got a big note, which is Hindi oud, but then you've got the big, bitter kind of medicinal qualities with the kind of thick sweetness of jasmine. And then- It's all the, balanced. It's all balanced. The other thing in it, which kind of lasts um, kind of towards the end is she, this sandalwood note, which I started to recognize in a few of her fragrances. Um, and you don't necessarily get it yet, but you get it later on. And it's awesome. I mean, if you love sandalwood, I, yeah. I've never really found sandalwood which blown my mind, like, like the sandalwood in some of these. I love that one. I find it absolutely fascinating, amazing. And the, again, the dry down is stunning on this. And I, I found this lasted like 12 plus hours, no problem. Yeah. It just kept going and developing. It was, it was real magic. Real magic. <sighs> right. We've got lots to get through. Funk, amazing. <laughs> Next, we're sticking with oud. So we, we've done a kind of, kind of uh, we've started with one which is a kind of gourmandy. Then we're going through some oud ones. Then we're going to some more vintagey ones. So this is another oud one. Um, this is one like for full right. disclosure. She, when I I bought some samples, then I bought two thirty mil bottles, which you'll see later. And with those thirty mil bottles, she put in a ten mil uh, bottle of black spruce. Oh yeah. yeah, the sub. This has got a subtitle of this, which is the handsome woodsman. Oh, that's me. <laughs> so this is another kind of oud. So it's the slightly more expensive category. It's Vietnamese oud. Now I'm just going to come out and say that I don't like the first spray of this. I find the first spray of this a bit too. I don't know if it's it's kind of. There's something about the kind of pine, which when you first smell it, for me, it's too much. It's too medicinal. It's too acrid. I don't know if there's olibana, like frankincense in there as well. Do you know what I also think might be an association? I don't know if you get this. I had it the first time I sprayed it. Was that because it was so piney and so sort of so diffusive, I got a big kind of, I know there, it's not in here, but I got a big iso -E super vibe. And it's something that I always respond to and I sort of... You get, it, you get of, it in a lot of sort of those big woody cedar incense fragrances. Yeah, I don't, I don't know because, uh, yeah, the, the, the first spray is so kind of like in your face, piney, woody, that I, I kind of know what you mean. I don't, I mean, obviously it isn't iso -E super because, you know, they're all natural, but it's so, it's almost, um, the first spray is almost a bit sledgehammery. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't sell like you, you would think by the way I'm describing it, I don't like it. But this, this is another uh, beautiful fragrance. And this, this, you know, bright in your face kind of pine and cedar does um, dissipate quite soon. It's already started yeah. to do on, on, on paper and it's the same, you know, so we're talking like a minute. Um, and eventually you're just in the forest, aren't you? You're just, yeah. <sighs> just green. A lot of, a lot of other herbs there as well. Yeah. In the opening. I, I get a big sort of juniper, a lot of, a lot of green mm. herbaceous aspects it's not just the sort of the immediate pine smell and i wonder it'd be interesting to know with with some of these if this is one you know it's an oud fragrance i you know i haven't smelled the oud on its own but if you kind of started with the oud and worked backwards you know maybe it was an oud which had kind of some green facets 
and so she kind of yeah. explored those. But I mean, already that that kind of harshness I was talking about, which I said I didn't like, has completely gone, and it's already it's thick and warm and enveloping and sexy, and there's a kind of a creamy yeah. woodiness. I think there must be a bit of sandalwood in here as well. It's just I get a big oh. dose of oak moss rearing its head in this as well. You just tobacco it, it's, oak moss smoke. It's just you know it's a real forest floor experience. And the first time I wore this. It was a day when I went on a walk you know, through some woods and things, and I was just surrounded by, you know, trees, greenery, bracken, moss, and... Oh, a bit and of vetiver as well. Dry. Something grassy. It's, it's kind of, there is a dry kind of green... Oh, it's, it's, and, and the, eventually the oud, and I, I don't know if it's the sandalwood as well, or it's just the wood, the wood, the oud becomes very kind of warm and creamy and rich. But it's, oh, it's very... Is there some le like leather or birch going on here? Well, there could, you know, I mean, there could definitely the be some birch in there. But I, again, I don't know if it's just oud. But there is a, yeah, there is a kind of gentle smokiness going on as well, isn't there? Yeah, I'm getting a little smoky co cooked, cooked leather mm. behind, all of, behind all of that bright herbaceousness. This, this is... Um, some nice citrus there as well, actually, in the opening. There's um, you know, this is this is a pretty kind of like bare-chested, axe-wielding, manly kind of fragrance. I feel. I think. Yeah. I mean, all fragrances. It's unisex, big. It's big on the cedar. It's really big yeah. on the cedar. I think. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. It, it sounds like I mean, it was a bit harsh about the opening, but that is how I felt about the opening. Um, no, you just got to say what you what you think. You've got to go with what you your first reaction is. Right. Here's another one. Bulgakov. Um, oh, here's great. another one, which is like this is. I think this was the second one I tried, and this is one where I I went straight out and I, I bought um, a, a 10 mil pencil of this. So this is Bulgakov, um, and I think it's inspired. So he's a 20th century Russian author, wrote, writer of um, uh, the Master and Margarita, and this is a, a fragrance of very much two halves for me because I bought it and then mm. I sprayed it and I thought. I thought this is one of the oud fragrances that she does because what you get at the beginning, there's kind of no suggestion. It's caraway, lavender, and aniseed. It's really kind of harsh, not harsh, it's, uh, 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 it's the second time I've said harsh, but it, it's kind of bright, almost edgy. God, wow, that lavender is awesome, isn't it? Like it's you, don't, you don't get a hint of it going in a, a sort of oud direction. Or a warm, that, that, a warm that, ambery direction, which I eventually got. That's, yeah, well, yeah, definitely. But that lavender is amazing. That's so good, that lavender, isn't it? And, and, it, and it's another one where I think oh, the first few seconds, like chewy. the caraway and aniseed were quite, um, you know, that kind of uh, basil-y, um, you know, it's almost like drinking perno or something. That the first yeah. smell is a bit overwhelming and then it kind of, kind of settles quite down. Tart. But, and I think she's maybe kind of riffing on the, the you can sometimes get a kind of bright, um, almost a medicinal quality to, to lavender. And she's riffing on that with the caraway and aniseed. But eventually it's kind of softened and you've now got the kind of warmth of lavender. Amazing, nice. amazing, amazing. And I get, I kind of get real, yeah. like, as I do with Mem by Bogaway, the kind of thing of, of just being in a whole field of lavender, being like completely overwhelmed by it. Like, <laughs> I mean... It's is it different types of lavender again, as in what? as in my. As in uh, as in mem. Mem, sorry. Possibly, or, or I don't know if it's just because she's playing with um you know with the aniseed and caraway to kind of you know give shape to it. Is there some rose going on here as well? Possibly, yeah. Just my but, nose. I'm getting a little bit more rose. But I think what you so what you hinted at before, and what what I said as well is that it starts off like this. And then it takes you in just a completely unexpected, for me, direction. Uh, we're not going to get this far on card, but on skin, you eventually got like a load of labdanum, like a really ambery, yeah. thick, gooey, treacly, caramelly. Um, and then, or, or even starting to get the, it picking its head up, and then you get some Styrax as well. We mentioned Styrax at the beginning yeah. where she gives some kind of funk. And the way that kind of works with the oud 
the oot I, I, it goes it just goes really boozy on me like ambery but boozy as well yeah i almost it went slightly like honeyed on me which was mm. interesting slightly like a honey oud combo it's really interesting isn't it i almost feel like i'm having some weird like whiskey or some kind of rye spirit or you know you know some you know something like that which yeah. which which starts with fire and edge and ends up with that warm feeling down your chest well a really good old like 30 or 40 year old glenlivet or something like that has that oh. you have that you have the, the the beef and the leather but you have caramel oh, you have very soft velvety sort of warm undertones and again I think that achieves is- it this is one which I found like it lasted a really long time on me, and I just, I just enjoyed like living through the kind of story and the process of it, and the fact yeah. that the first spray, you've just got no idea where you're going. It feels very classical again. Not that maybe as vintage as some of the later, but very yeah, classically but I, done. But yeah, the kind of the kind of the journey from kind of top to bottom, kind of like a sheepery, as if you've got a kind of like a, a bright kind of citrusy flourish. Mm giving way to a labdanami, um oak mossy base. Yeah. Really interesting. She's really, really, really respected the structure there, I think. Okay. So here is, next one. Here is one where I bought a 30 mil of it. Da, 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 oh, you da, got da. some. This is the easiest one to find in the, in the samples because of the color. Yeah, I mean, it looks, I don't it's think I've ever seen perfect in this color. Looks like kind of cherry, like Coke or something like this. So this it's is great. Garden of Pleasures. Now this, this, this is one I which um, it. So she kind of takes on the story of the Shalimar Gardens, and she kind of fo- follows it through. If you, if you like a bit, she, it's called the Love Affair. So um, you know, Shalimar Gardens probably a, a very well known inspiration for a certain fragrance. This is ah, yes. This is, it doesn't really smell, you know, have any kind of connection to Shalaman, the perfume, but it is, she says, I'm looking at my notes, it's the Emperor Shah Jahan and the Empress uh, Muntaz Mahal. Um, and she characterizes them, the Emperor with a Hindi oud and the uh, Empress with a Vietnamese oud. I guess the Hindi oud maybe is a bit more punchy and a bit more animalic. The Vietnamese is a little bit yeah. more, more kind of rounded and, and, and beautiful. And this is like, when you first spray, you get wow! It's such a you are like immediately for me just transported, like it's just absolute totally, totally exoticism. Straight, I mean, straight to this huge opulent floral palace, basically for me. <sighs> Very like, chewy, really chewy. Like you could, like you could take like a, a whole mouthful out of it. <laughs> And Shampaka, which I've, which I've really, really started to enjoy. Yeah. It's a, I've started to really identify and enjoy Shampaka oh, and things. I really Champaka, get... Shampaka, Shampaka, Champ. I get... But I do get a night garden as opposed to a, a day garden, if you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, 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 there's something slightly muted. It's not quite... It's not quite bright, bursting florals. It's more dense, chewy kind of florals, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. Not that it's it's not like overly heavy with tuberose and and champaka at all. It's not actually heavy. It's not overly indolic. But I'm definitely aware of oud like from the outset, and it's quite a twang, I think, uh, yeah. to, to, to the oud at the beginning. Quite quite nutty as well. Yeah, yeah. Like the, like an almond paste or something going on here as definitely. well. Definitely, I can't sure get. Or what that is. I know what you mean about the almondiness. I get a kind of almondiness which I get from some of the old Gerland fragrances as well. So is that heliotrope, maybe, or something like that? I'm not, not sure, possibly. I wonder. It's what gives it that nice pastry vibe in L'Arbre Bleu, and yeah. that slight edible quality. But, or is oh, it frangipan? Is... Frangipan that you might get in some of those Bortnikovs that we like. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, there could be some frangipan Cakey. Here. It's definitely cakey, but there's that ooze, and I, I do get, like, the... It's not, like, I wouldn't describe this as barnyardy, but there is a real twang and an edge edge to that hindi oud and i do get the feel of it just it just they just roll in and out of each other sometimes you get this kind of twangness but sometimes you get this um warmer rounder slightly more boozy kind of leathery oudiness and then the other thing in this yeah which I, I find really really especially at the end 
like the dry dynamic, it's all about the sandalwood. Yeah. I just got, and uh, yeah, I remember, I remember being in, well, I was in Mumbai going to some Jainian temples and they have, they use sandalwood a lot as part of kind of ritual and ceremony. And so, and it's kind of grounded in drug haste and they spread it on their heads and things. Like, and and the, the, the smell of the sandalwood kind of hangs thick and dense in the air. Yeah. And it's that kind of sandalwood that it's quite rare. I mean, sandalwood is a note which is used loads. Um, but it's when it's, it's so thick and uh, feels kind of uh, genuinely oriental, if that's an acceptable yeah. term. Um, well, of course. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, it's it's a whole Im- it's a whole image that it conjures up in one in one smell. It's weird. this is it's this amazing. is one that on you know on on paper and in terms of notes, it's not necessarily that unlike you know things we smelled before. But it's weird. It just it somehow smells. Very different. I, but I think the combination I of all those florals and, and this really medicinal, like, finely etched oud, I think that combination is quite rare. To do it well, to do it really well. Yeah. And, and using do... all naturals as well. Yeah. You know, that's, it's that's just, a feat. And it's just one of those things where I just find it, like, so compelling and engrossing and yeah. um, it just draws me in. You keep going back for more, don't you? I, I had someone on here earlier on, actually. It's bloody right. good. It's bloody good. Next, so I think from this, this garden of, of pleasures, favorites. this Chalamagons, to there's, there's a natural kind of segue, segue? A segue? A segue yeah. <laughs> to the, um, the kind of vintage section. So this is, this is a Jacques. This is Jacques. So this is directly inspired by Chalamar. So this, um, we mentioned Nickel before, Nickel from Exotic Sense, he challenged uh, uh, Tion, uh, Dr. Reinhold, to make an all-natural version of Shalimar. And in, in, in her, she puts it on the website, she says there's kind of certain caveats, like why try to, try to remake what is perfect? Um, right, anyway. What do you, th- talk to me about this. Well, I, the first thing I thought was, wow, yep, Shalimar all the way. But actually, I, I kind of prefer it to the stuff that they're making now. I think this, this feels very much smoother, f- far better blended, far less in your face with all of its various elements. And I think that, you know, the quality of the, of the bergamot and the, and the florals in the opening of this, especially the bergamot, I feel is what, like, one of the things that makes Shalimar beautiful, I think, in this as well. One of the things about I'm sure I get lemon I in this. And I... Yeah. I feel like I get lemon. I don't really necessarily get lemon in, in Shalimar. I think the, what this is closer to... The bergamot to, aspect, though, I get. But the bergamot... And I think the bergamot is more um, obvious in the X-ray than it is in the EDP or the EDT. Yeah. Certainly, I mean, the X-ray I've got, which is about 30 years old, is the bergamot is quite prominent in there. I mean, it's just... You... Yeah. There's no, that is the second you spray, you think Shalimar. Um yeah. It's a really nice feeling. It is. It is a really nice feeling. I mean, I've got to say, I was. Um, I like it. I can't. I, I understand the point in it, and it's been. It, she's been set a challenge. Um, but I personally, I would never buy it. Um, I guess because I've got an old like Shalimar X-ray. Yeah, um, you don't need it. And it and it is beautiful, but. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it sounds it's, it's, it's such an, it's an idiotic thing to say. I don't see the point in it because, of course, I see the point in it. It's because she was challenged to do it, um, and she even puts this kind of slight caveat about it. It's interesting that you've had such a um, you know, you said it's kind of one, one of your favourite, which is you know what we said at the beginning about having kind of personal mm. reactions to things. Yeah, yeah. I just I I love the fact that it exists that someone has loved Shalimar and that much and sort of tried to recreate it, but not using the same exact ingredients. I've got to say, one of the things, this is one of, when I first heard about the house, this is one of the things I, that pricked my interest. And so maybe my expectations were so high, but then I don't want to expect, what I expected. Did I expect a carbon copy of Shalimar? And if it was yeah. that, would I be so sort of like... Um, I just, okay. I think it's, I think it's a really nice, a nice sort of tribute and a connection to the past. Yeah, which is something about this house that obviously that they have, they have that sort of um, 
appreciation for the classics and the origins. I mean, it makes me like I don't like it. This is just their way of. But no, there's no, nothing. No. I mean, there's nothing bad you can say about the smell. <laughs> it's no, glorious. It's, it's very beautiful. It's opulent. It's rich. It's this winner. Oh, right. Sorry. So from one classic French laptop uh, has died, so my light's gone out there, but that's okay. I can still just about see you. Beautiful. I'm still here. Let Let's move on to another French name. This is Francois. Now she's not quite so explicit about this, but are we thinking Coty? A little bit, I would say. I mean, the, just, that, the sort of that beautiful, um, that sort of orange blossomy, ambery style, Shepra. There's something about it, isn't there? This is, Where and is also, it? you can't see from the, the sample, but I'll, I'll put a picture up. But like this, this is basically black, <laughs> this, this liquid, isn't it? Like, it's super it, dark, yeah. It, it's so, so dark. So she describes this... Um, some of them have a little subtitle. Uh, Jacques was owed to a love affair. Garden of Pleasures was a love affair. This is quite simply an um, orange blossom sheep bro. But, I mean... It's so that good. That first spray is amazing. Like, it's just yeah. bergamotty. Um, oh, it's orange blossomy, but bergamotty as well. Yeah. And, oh, and you feel immediately there's just a whole world um, <sighs> backed up behind it. Big dose of, of geranium as well in there. Yes, yeah, massively, Doing massively. A fresh, so. clean, minty magic. And it, it so reminds me of this one. Friend. There's a Grossmith flavour, isn't there? With with um, geranium. Is it, is it Hassan and Hannah that's got the geranium in it? Or, um, anyway, I think it does have, but I think full Nana as well. Yeah, maybe it's full Nana. I'm thinking. Of. But and, oh. and I think for, it's just interesting that for me geranium is often a floral which steals steers things in a masculine direction but for me yeah. it just it just makes it's in perfect kind of equilibrium it's a completely unisex fragrance i think as as most great cheapers are like like cheaper palatine yeah. is a great modern cheaper um even mitsuku like um do you know the orange in that really actually reminds me i think because because it's so rich of Moyaka, the the sort of chocolatiness of of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some relationship there, isn't there? And I, but I'm not getting chocolate well, here, which is interesting. But 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 the other thing I I get about this, and maybe I'm not sure. The first couple of times, basically, I thought the patchouli in this, and especially in the dry down, I thought was a little bit too prominent. I feel kind of sampling her work. I feel that she got this sandalwood note, which crops up and again and again, which is amazing, and also this patchouli, which is very. Uh, uh, rich and quite kind of dusty, which crops up a lot, and she seems to quite like patchouli. And when mm. I wore this uh, initially, the first few times, I felt that the patchouli became a little bit too big in this. Um, but I wore this today, and I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't quite so troubled by that, I have to say. But I wonder yeah. if that's if that's the uh, that is the relation uh, to to Mokaya because that's quite patchouli heavy as well. That would make sense. But it just does. It just does everything you want from a really, really great ship. Cheaper. You've got this sensational, bright, energetic kind of citrusy opening. You've got kind of some florals flying around in the mid. Oak moss, labdanum, patchouli in the base. It's that beautiful labdanum and patchouli in the base that I think are the magical things because the the opening yeah. in the middle are so great that you you could be so disappointed if it just petered away to nothing. And the fact that it's so beautiful in the in the dry down and the base as well it feels, like a, it feels like a bonus. When I looked at the colour of the juice, it's so dark. I thought it was going to be a, like a maybe a massive, just a ridiculous glug of oak moss. And the oak yeah. moss is obviously there, but I'm not aware of it being too oak moss heavy. No, no. Doesn't feel like that at all. Um, it's oh, just it's so good. It does. It I mean, I prefer this to Jacques, I have to say. I think this is another league of, of yeah. personality. But of course, it, it, you know, that one, is, one is a clone and this is a. This is more inspired by. I don't, I don't think. I think clones a bit harsh, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, a, 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 a tribute to. Now we've got to we've got to keep going because you know we've got so much to get through. Right, the next one. Now I can't remember if I actually sent you this version, which is pagan oud. I'm not sure. Maybe I just sent you pagan. I think I think I maybe I just sent you pagan. How dark is pagan oud? I mean, it's pretty That's... dark, but I think 
Yeah, no, I think th this is this is pagan nude. Yeah. So I sent that. you when um so when I got the ensembles initially, pagan was one of the ones. I mean, let let me hear what you think about pagan. Let um, um well, I'm interested to see your reaction. My my first impression with this was a big. I may even made some notes at the time. I got a big dose of dry florals, almost like as if you'd pan roasted them, and basil. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, and I've been I've been cooking a lot recently, so I've been smelling all of these spices and things, and just finding out lots of white lots of white florals going on. I got, and in the base, I got quite a good glug of oak moss. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I didn't get anything too too big or heavy or medicinal. I got I got a bit more of that that patchouli that I've smelt in some of the others. But then, all right, all right, I just I mean I I I love. I can't I mean, identify I loved... the florals. No, because I think the florals are so kind of dense and thick. I just feel like they're going, Ugh. like it's just. Yeah. I mean, I love Francois. Like it's absolutely beautiful, cheaper. But I, I, when I then smelt this afterwards, I was like, I've got to have me some of this. I've got to get this. This like pagan yeah. was mine. I just kind of reacted. To it. And then I did a bit of research, and I saw she did pagan oud, which is the same thing, but with a bit of Hindi oud in it. I was like. It's a no and, and it's and it's and for me it just resonates because I felt you know when you smell the one you've got you kind of think oh I can see how some castorium would fit in in here because mm. um, I feel there's a relation to things like maybe yatagan sort not it's not exactly that like yet but that kind of thing or even I just yeah. I don't think it smells exactly like but I was just reminded of kuros in terms of that just ultra manly dark yeah sheepra. Um, it's unapologetic, isn't it? And it's quite austere as well. This, this yeah. is a serious fragrance. This is for, serious. For a moody, sultry day, I think. I mean, it's just it's the same I have. I'm sorry, I didn't send you any of the, the Hindi Oud version, but it's this just has got that extra bit of funk just to kind of add to it. And I get like, you know, leather jackets, like even, it's not a, literally a gasoline smell, but it's that kind of feel. You know, it's, it, yeah. it's kind of sweat and oil on your, your forehead and... Oh, it's just wow! Like, <laughs> I've got to try some of that as well. I, I mean, this, this is interesting actually having two slightly different ones. This to me is sort of genius, really. And th this was one of the biggest of the nostalgia trips. Yeah, well, I that's... couldn't put my finger on it, but it, it reminded me of so many classic smells I remember <sighs> when I was young. That's the thing, and that's why you know when I when I went through the the, the samples, this is the one. You know, I thought I need to get myself a bottle because I just had I had such an emotional response to it. And I say that Pagan Oud isn't actually listed as is in one you can buy in the main section. You have to go. The best thing to do if you is to ask her, <coughs> and she's basically kind of running out of it. So you need to kind of ask her to make you up a, a thirty mil bottle. There's an option to buy a yeah. ten mil bottle, but not a thirty mil bottle. So you need to go on there and ask her. But this. So what like, kind of what kind of price is that then? So I think this was at the three hundred dollars for thirty mil. Okay. Um, is that right? No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Two hundred and eight US dollars for thirty mil. Very so, good. Yeah. Yeah, two hundred eight. Um, it also reminds me of some of, like this is a much better done, but it reminds me of some of those old classics, like English leather, and yeah. taboo, and those sort of things that you you smell them now and they're quite rough. But actually done well like this. But that's but that's what I mean. Stunning. That's why I, I had an emotional response to it because I feel like oh, I've smelt this before. Like I know this. This is yeah. But but done in a, in a kind of new way. Brilliant stuff. Amazing. Right. So right. We, we've got we've mm. got to carry on because we've got two more. We've got a couple of the close then, to my heart ones here. This we've got two more rows. Well, yeah. In fact, I'll, these are the most kind of rose dominant ones. Rosie, so. Rosie. Tantra. Tantra. We'll after this. We all try and do a bit of that now and then, don't we? <laughs> Gets us through lockdown, doesn't it? So. This, this was so interesting for me. Tell me about it. Well, I, the first, I got two things like within a very short space of time. One of them, again, was this Thai rose. 100%, yeah. And the second was funky, funky, styraxy something. I yeah. don't know. But the combination of those two, not a huge amount going on in between, oh, wow. I, I felt. Some this patchouli. Thai rose, oh, it's so, I mean, the Thai rose. It's really dusty of, as well. Oh, 
it's so amazing this type of race yeah. i mean <laughs> beautiful it just one of the best i've smelled i think you've just got to sit there and just marvel it's just breathtaking stuff beautiful really beautiful i mean if you if you love sherbet lemon as well if you love you know as we do things like Arisha Dore and and, and Bortnikov for those kind of quality of fragrances for me this type of rose in here you know and crime and punishment as well yeah <sighs> amazing amazing gorgeous fresh but, but dirty as well at the same time mm. and she like and, and, and sides of the coin well that's the thing she but she finds the kind of whereas some I'm right, the, the kind of fragrance, the Thai rose fragrance that springs to mind is Malakal Thai by Arisha Dore. Um, whereas obviously that has real musk in it, real animal musk, which is what gives it the kind of the funk and the warmth. Whereas here, she does it with Styrax. And it's so successful. And in, in a way, it, it, it's so authentic as an animalic note, even though she's not using a synthetic, she's not using yeah. an animal product, but yet she's created that animalic hum and then the, the two it's other very things, clever isn't it two other things which i kind of get to recognize from her is the sandalwood note which is just awesome and it, yeah. for, for a lot of them i felt the kind of sandalwood note kind of outlasted a few other things and you were just left with this lovely creaminess and but and the patchouli as well but in the at the moment we're still like especially on cards you're just getting type 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 yeah. rose like it's a really, it sounds like a stupid thing to say, but it's a really appealing smell. Oh, it's a really inviting smell. You want to keep coming back and seeing what it's, what it's, it's doing and what it's changing. It's interesting compared to the one we've just smelled, Pagan, mm. which is so dark and almost slightly miserable and aggressive. Yeah. This is so The Yang Yang comparison is very good, actually. This is so positive and bright. and But also, you know, mm. I, I feel I am somehow immediately transported to the exotic you know it feels yeah, like a totally. non it feels like a non-western fragrance yeah absolutely right it feels like i mean this is atar. yeah exactly this is right right out of the treasure chest of the middle east isn't it wow so but it's... still done through this classical french structured pyramid i think <sighs> yeah it's really i mean it's really really clever one more i certainly couldn't make that if i was a few i don't think <laughs> One, this is the last one we're going to talk about today. This is also from the uh, Conte de Fée, the um, fairy tale selection. So this is not one that I ordered. It's just one she uh, threw in for me, which is very nice. It's called Raven, which mm. she describes as a rose sheepra. She wasn't wrong. And isn't it amazing how different it is from the one we just smelled? See, I, th I feel like this is, has more rose than the last one yeah. but it's not it's not the Thai rose with that lemony brightness it's rose 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 god yeah there's got to be a few different kinds of rose in here for me i think yeah i think it's rose de my i mean i say i think i'm not telling you my i'm a red it's rose de my damascus rose but you get that fat juiciness oh, so you've got of, rose a couple of rose yeah oh. wow i mean wow That's wow some big wow, florals wow, wow. behind it it's it's kind of propped up with some with some stuff like that yeah well, it's got that the kind of I it's get interesting. Tobacco -y thing as well. It's it is. I do think this is like a, a sheepery kind of thing. In that instead of having bergamot in the top, or I don't know, peach or whatever, you've got rose, and then it, and then you've got yeah. your floral. You've still got your florals in the mid. You've still got your kind of there's some white florals, possibly some jasmine and ylang ylang as well, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But I wore this. See, I wore this a little while ago, so. It's going off the and cap. then you've got her sheep base, which you know we're starting to recognise the kind of labanum patchouli oak moss. Yeah, um, I love the fact the labanum never never takes it in too much of a sweet, like vanillary because that can happen sometimes. Labanum can just be mm. this thick, sweet, syrupy thing. Well, I mean, it was. I don't. I don't always enjoy that. This feels like I it's do. got a bit of smoky, savoury. Yeah. Stuff going on behind. Well, it's interesting, yeah, because it's, I, was just, I was just looking back through my notes to remind myself, but it was Bulgakov, wasn't it? Which was the most labdanum, ambery, yeah. kind of rich. Whereas, yeah, here, it's, oh, God, it's good. It's really good, this one. <laughs> um, really stunning. It's, it, it, but I do think it's interesting to see how much patchouli her sheepers have got 
and I, I do find um, it's possibly a little bit more patchouli than I might expect. Yeah, I mean, it could have stirred into an oriental territory a little bit. But I find with all of these, even the heavy ones, they have a lightness as well. I don't find okay, any of them yeah. oppressive. I, mm. they, all, they all have, where there's darkness, there's also like a chink of light at the same time. I think that's oh. a real trick in great perfume making. Perfume making. I don't know why I put the weird American. So, thing. talk me through. So, as, as I've said, I, you know, I bought, mm. you know, I, I bought all of these. Um, but she, I, I did buy a bottle of Garden of Pleasures and a bottle of um, Pagan Oud. So, Joe, yeah, which were your favourites? And if you're going to fork out your cash, um, I'm, I, tonight, I'm actually going to make an order. I think for sure. Um, Bulgogov, I can never pass it. Bulgogov. Yeah. For me, and oh, can I have three? I mean, Moyaka as well. The first one I tried, I really loved. And Francois. Interesting. Because I, lo I love, I love the feeling that this, this thing could have come straight out of like 1908. Yeah. Straight to my door. I love that. But I, I have to say, I love all of them. I. I, I love all of them. I think they're they're really stunning. As, as you've seen, I've bought two bottles. But if I was going to buy another one, it would be Megas. Oh, Isn't it yeah, interesting yeah. that I actually, like, Oud Picante is the only bottle by Arif Lodore I've ever bought and sold a bottle of. And I kind of regret it now because, you know, it, people now, you know, spend like $1,000 on these old Arif Lodore oh, bottles. Yeah. And this doesn't, it's not exactly the same, but this is just wow. It's just wow. It's my, just, my it's bottle. just for me. It's all factory fireworks. But then I also love these two rose fragrances. Yeah, I mean they're really stunning. Just sensational. And I've got to say, does like, she do ten mils of all of these? I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure if she does ten mils of all of them. It's. I, I mean, I would say some things. Are, and there are some things available which is not completely clear from the website. So if you like the sound of things that we've talked about so she does do sample packs um but she does do some of these 10 mil pencils so i mean i can't promise anything but i would suggest that you contact her and say oh i don't know i really want to get some Drop samples and a 10 mil of this but you can't see there's a 10 mil of this can i get 10 mil of that whatever yeah i mean i i'm hugely impressed by this i house is a very sorry house is a very sort of awful word to use like, like i'm impressed by this house but you know, this brand, whatever you want to call it, I think are stunning. Yeah. I mean, really or original, despite all having a nod to the past and all having this classical structure and, yeah. you know, appreciation of the, of the where they came from. I mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm tempted, to, because some, some of these have been so kind of surprising, really, that I'm tempted to... Mm. Well, it's, it's difficult, but to go for the things which I wouldn't have obviously gone for, maybe the kind of like citrus florals, you know, because I wonder if there's going to be something there which is going to completely have, uh, have blown my mind. And also the other thing that everybody seems to have a different um, favourite. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, let us know if you think, especially based on the ones that we've tried here, what other ones we should try. Are there loads more then? Is there, uh, do we have lots more behind it? Yeah, these. there are. There are quite a few. I mean, there's maybe the same again, something like that. Oh God! Wow. Um, so there, there's a quite. I mean, oh, I'd love, song, to, I'd love to try some more of these. Night song is one that kind of people talk about lots. It's got some of the same notes as uh, of, uh, as Garden of Pleasures, but people say seem to experience it quite differently. Um, yeah, there's there's lots of other things. Blue Lotus is another one which I've seen people speaking about a lot. Um, oh, cool. But. Awesome, lovely. Great stuff. There's a lot to be happy about. Thank so, you for introducing me, Dan. Oh, thank you for sharing I appreciate the day. It. Uh, until next time, Bye. happy sniffing.